He kōna e purangi tēnei nā te reo irirangi o Aotearoa. Saddle bags, puku, pooch, hips, double chins, the inner thigh gap, bra bulge, hip rolls, muffin top, lumpiness in their knees, more jibbly jobbly there, all the mummy tummy, love handles, the grabbable bits, right? So, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Every time you ask that, it makes me more nervous. Kia ora, I'm Stacey Morrison, your new host for Season 2 of Healthy or Hoax, where we find out whether current health fads are as good for us as they claim to be. And I'm literally putting my body on the line for this first episode. OK, here we go. Ugh, that's a weird feeling. Yeah. Ew, that feels weird. Because I can't really feel my tummy, but I can feel that you're doing it. Like I've got a cold stone or something on yeah. my stomach. Ew. Like a sausage. <laughs> Cold sausage. <laughs> okay, I better not laugh because that no, makes can... things worse. Oh, wow, this feels like they're going right on in there. Ow, they put that me hurt. In this episode, I'm getting some cool sculpting done. You try hard. You eat right, mostly. You make time when you can. But sometimes life gets in the way, and that stubborn fat just won't go away. Cool sculpting takes you further. A non-surgical treatment that targets, freezes, and eliminates treated fat cells for good. I am one of the first subjects. Uh, I'm missing one of my love handles <laughs> from having treated myself 10 years ago, and it, it's still really obvious. This is Dr. Rox Anderson. I'm a professor in dermatology at Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. He's the guy who invented cryolipolysis, or cool sculpting. Well, I'll tell you the whole story briefly. It's got a bit of a rough start. I had a patient, uh, I didn't treat this patient, but she actually died from having liposuction. And I got motivated to come up with a non-invasive alternative. So he tried lasers. We actually succeeded. I wrote scientific papers on how you can take laser light and shine it through your skin and kill the fat underneath. But it turned out that that was both expensive and painful. It was back to the drawing board. I am a pediatric dermatologist. I take care of mostly little children. And there's this oddball thing that was reported first in 1970 called popsicle paniculitis. So Mother Nature has made it that any infant, if you put something in its mouth, will suck on it. And... Years and years ago, parents put a popsicle in their newborn uh, child's mouth, and lo and behold, the cheeks get inflamed, and the fat within the fat little baby's cheek dies, and you end up with a skinny-cheeked kid. Dr. Anderson started asking what is really going on with popsicle paniculitis, and would it work on adults too? The answer to those questions are yes, we can understand it, and yes, you can make it happen in an adult. Um, and it was all about getting the temperatures right and understanding what was going on inside the tissue. He even tried it on himself. We first made a prototype device like a refrigerator that you cool the skin down with, the skin and the fat, and I personally believe in the golden rule. You know, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but if you're doing medical research, my version is do unto yourself things that you would be willing to do unto others. <laughs> so I, I was just curious and um, got one of my colleagues to treat me out of sheer curiosity. It's still really obvious. So I, I can tell you for at least myself that, you know, it's a long-lasting result. But how does cool sculpting work? It's cooling tissue that includes fat tissue down to a temperature near zero degrees Celsius where the lipids, which are the fat-like molecules in the tissue, uh, start to crystallize. They go from liquid to solid state, um, but the water does not. So that produces stress on the cells that contain a lot of those fats, and it induces the cells to die. So cryolipolysis is a treatment, very simple. There's no drugs, there's no radiation. You just carefully cool tissue down to a temperature for a period of time that the cells that have a lot of fats in them are induced to die. And that process is selective. And there is the key thing that uh, you don't want to kill everything. (laughs) Sounds brilliant. 
freeze fat away. Don't harm anything else. Can weight loss really be that simple? By the time you're about 10 years old, uh, the number of fat cells is pretty much fixed. When we eat too much or exercise too little and gain weight, the fat cells will increase in size or decrease in size. However, those cells are not immortal. They're dying, they're aging and and being replaced about 10% per year. So this is constant slow turnover going on. The cells, when they're fully mature, they have a lot of the lipid molecules in them, and the cooling selectively affects those mature fat cells. The cryolipolysis encourages them to die. They actually die by a natural process called apoptosis. Um, and then it, it takes a very long time for fat to remodel itself. It's at least a decade before you're going to see much a return of the tissue. Now, it, it doesn't work in everyone. Some people, it's about 80% or so of people that will have a nice result. 20% of the people doesn't work so well. And then there's a rare patient, about one in a thousand or something, where you can actually grow some additional fat. But it's a very useful treatment. If you sign up for cryolipolysis, you've got an 80% chance of getting rid of the unwanted fat in a selective way. Hi, Stacey. Um, I shall be looking after you today. Kia ora. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Aisha Chillick is a registered nurse and has been working in appearance medicine for nearly a decade. She's done thousands of cool sculpting cycles. Let me have a look at you and let me grab your fat. First we have a consultation and try to decide which bits to freeze. When we started talking about this I was thinking about my puku. Yes. So I've had three children yes. and I think that's pretty standard for what people call a mummy tummy. Yes. Um, But then you started talking bra bulge, and that spoke to me as well. (laughs) So Aisha grabs my puku. Oh, no, that's not a lot there. Have you totally blobbed your tummy out for me? And my bra bulges. You could have a little bit there. Both of them will have a good result. It's just really what bothers you first and what's in your budget. So this is a good time to talk about the cost. Cool sculpting isn't cheap. Prescription skincare does do bulk deal discounts, but generally it's $1,000 a cycle, and for most areas you need two cycles, or you'll end up like Rox Anderson with one love handle. But most people do see results. We say that you'll get about a 20% decrease in fat cells permanently. We're shown photos of past clients. She had a total of eight on her tummy and eight on her hips, a total of 16 cycles. So if I didn't know, and they were just before and after photos, and I assumed it was diet, I'd say, well, she's lost maybe four or five kg. No, and there was no weight loss. Really? Mm. But but the look of her has changed. Maybe it has that because much. you've taken the fat away. It sounds good, and the photos look good, but 20% is one of those relative things, isn't it? It kind of depends on your starting point. This is a non-surgical approach for pockets of fat that bother you. It's not a weight loss program. It's unethical for me to treat someone that doesn't need the treatment. It's also, I feel, unethical to treat someone that hasn't got realistic expectation, that needs 10 on their tummy to get the result when actually maybe a surgical approach would be better in the end for you. Because I don't have a magic wand. (laughs) Okay, so I'm up for this. What can I expect? So to have you do your tummy, you'd be here a couple of hours. The treatment cycles are only 35 minutes. We apply usually a cold, wet, slimy gel pad on the area and we apply the suction. It is a suction that's sucking the fat into the cup. What does that feel like? It is a little bit tender to begin with, but it's not painful, maybe slightly unpleasant. When the applicator turns itself off, um, then we do a two-minute vigorous massage. That gives you a chance of a 68% better result. Um, During that massage, you may feel a little bit dizzy or nauseous. Um, That passes within five to seven minutes. And is that a massage that you do or the machine does? I do, yeah. And then we sometimes give you a barley sugar if you have that dizzy, nausea feeling. I would say 50% of people feel like that, and that's normal. Okay, Mm -hmm. This is a non-surgical treatment, so there's nothing you cannot do. Drive yourself here, drive yourself home. You can go to the gym afterwards if you feel like it. (laughs) (laughs) It starts working on day three. You can see early results four to five weeks, but final results are eight to 12 weeks. Your body is still processing the fat up to 16 weeks. Right. Sounds not exactly pleasant, but manageable. 
What about side effects? You can be slightly bruised, swollen and numb post-treatment. Um, so sometimes the bruising and the swelling can make you feel a little bit tender and uncomfortable. So if you feel like you don't want to go to the gym or you feel a little bit sore, take some Panadol to relieve it. The bruising and the swelling goes down after about a week, but the numbness for about three weeks when you're having a shower, you go, oh, that still feels odd. That's all normal. Yeah, I probably think my arms were maybe five, six weeks. Wow. Numbness so that you couldn't move? or just Oh, no, just that odd. altered sensation when you're touching yourself. Mm-hmm. But not like you can carry on, like I said, go to the gym, do anything post. There's no downtime whatsoever. With a tummy, there is a 2% chance of nerve pain. Nerve pain comes on day three or four and lasts for about five, six days. I only have had three patients in five years and I've done a lot of tummies and you never know who that's going to happen to. So I do warn people and then I tell people if they were to get anything like that, which is like a stabbing pain, to ring us. If we are closed and that were to happen, you will need to go to an A&E and tell them it's probably nerve pain after this treatment. But you can call us any time. We give you a post-care instruction guidelines, pretty much about the bruising, swelling and numbness. Call us if we're open with you if you have any concerns at all. So nerve pain would be uh, within the realms of normal after effects? Yes, but rare. Like only 2% of people, like I said, I've had three people in five years. It's rare. And then there's the very slight chance your bulges end up worse. Paradoxal hyperplasia is where the area can become larger, not smaller. We've never had one in this clinic ever, but this is a surgical approach afterwards if that were to happen. Um, the other one is results may vary from person to person, although unlikely as possible you will not experience any noticeable result from this procedure. We call those people non-responders. I have had one at this clinic mm-hmm. in five years. After explaining all of this, we go through a form and I sign each paragraph. You're not pregnant or breastfeeding, no. um, and as long as it's no to all of these and that you have no history of hernia if we are doing your tummy. It's a little bit scarier than I thought. Are you, li- a, li- are you a little bit apprehensive? No, no, I'm, no, I'm OK, but I just haven't done something like this. I did get the treatment, you'll hear about that soon, but let's hear what the experts think of cool sculpting first. It is reasonably safe, to be honest, looking in the literature. This is Jonathan Wheeler. He's president of the New Zealand Association of Plastic Surgeons. There are very few complications, of course, and that's certainly uh, none that I'm aware of that have required hospitalisation or you know, damage to the skin and things. So I think it is safe. Wheeler is also co-director of the New Zealand Institute of Plastic and Cosmetic Surgery, which works closely with prescription skin care. He's read the many studies into cool sculpting that have come out since it was FDA approved in 2010. We'll put links to a few of them on the RNZ website if you want to take a look. In the evidence, anyway, there are a number of um, studies that have looked at this, and for very isolated areas of fat deposits, say what you'd colloquially know as saddlebags uh, or love handles, or even the little bit of hanging uh, fatty tissue you might get under your chin. By addressing those very specific areas, it can make um, a a meaningful difference uh, in that before and after. If something sounds too good to be true, it likely is too good to be true. So, this is Howard Klein. He's a Christchurch-based consultant plastic surgeon and a director of the Australasian Foundation for Plastic Surgery. Look, um, there have been any number of trends uh, around Uh, liposuction and body sculpting, et cetera, et cetera, that have come and gone uh, in the last uh, 25 years or so. Cool sculpting uh, and other companies who do fat cooling is just the latest iteration in my view. After the introduction of liposuction in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, There was ultrasonic liposuction, which uh, sort of liquefied the fat. There has been laser liposuction. There is a whole industry based on so-called lunchtime liposuction, which is done under local anesthesia. Then the introduction of rollers for cellulite. Like everything else that's happened around this specialty, eventually we will define the specific indications for which the treatment works. 
Klein just doesn't think cryolipolysis can help enough people in a meaningful way. While he thinks all these body contouring techniques have a place, none really stack up against liposuction for fat removal. One of my concerns about cryolipolysis is that it's a scattershot sort of treatment. You can't really individualize. You can't go after a particular area a little bit more than another area. It often requires multiple treatments, and it doesn't seem to be that effective for larger areas. So, for example, a typical patient that uh, I would consult for a body contouring would be uh, a woman who's had a few children, and she's got the um, hip rolls, or uh, what's commonly referred to as muffin tops, which is they're secondary to childbearing and nursing. They're very diet resistant. They got saddlebags on their outer thighs, fullness in the inner thighs, and um, some lumpiness in their knees as well. I think you'd be probably lucky to get by with only a single treatment. So while a one-off treatment is probably cheaper than liposuction, most patients get more than one treatment. And if you end up getting eight or ten treatments, well, then liposuction might be more cost-effective. Having said that, many people who are at their goal weight but still have stubborn pockets of fat balk at the idea of surgery. Um. Human Khorasani, I'm the Chief of Division of Dermatologic and Cosmetic Surgery at Mount Sinai Health System in New York City. Khorasani co-authored a 2019 article on non-invasive body sculpting techniques, which was published in the Australasian Journal of Dermatology. You always get the most honest answer for people in academia because, you know, I am not paid for that sculpting machine with my own wallet. The hospital has been buying all these devices, and I'm a consumer of it. And being an inquisitive academic, Dr. Khorasani has tried many of the body sculpting techniques. The cool sculpting I did was probably, I felt like it was most comfortable in terms of getting it. However, during the recovery period when it started rethawing, it started to get a little bit painful. In comparison, laser fat removal. I felt like it was very painful. I had to um, take, like not pain medicine, but it's called Pronox, which is sort of like a laughing gas. Uh, it's like on-demand laughing gas. More painful, but fewer side effects. So for my patients who didn't want any side effects at all, they would come to do the sculpture because there were less problems with it. But again, in men, we weren't as successful at treating them because it was a bit more painful because men tolerate pain worse than women. He said it, not me. Most recently, there's True Sculpt ID, which uses radio frequency to melt the fat cells. There was times that it got a little bit hot still, so it was not like white walk in a park, but it was definitely more tolerable than sculpture. Just to be in mind that there is always a new kid on the block that is very sexy and that as we kind of start <laughs> using, you know, it more and more and we start realizing, oh, okay, well, maybe the, you know, this is not as sexy as we thought it was. Yeah, so we're getting a little sidetracked. Let's get back to cool sculpting. The nice thing with cool sculpting is that it's been around for a long time. So we have a lot of data about it, both good and bad. Good news first. The good news is that we know that it's fairly effective anywhere, depending what studies you look at, anywhere from 15 to 24 percent of fat of the areas that it's treated can be reduced. The bad news? Patients complain about, okay, like, there's like a chronic pain that they have in an area. There is a question about possibly the effects on the nerve, the peripheral nerve system. Sometimes it can leave these little marks on the body. The other issue with it is called paradoxical hyperplasia. This is where they actually, the fat cells, instead of dying, they start to actually grow. And um, you have actually patients that have come to me to have those areas that grew extra with, removed with liposuction. Dr. Karasani reiterates what everyone has said. This is really for people who have their life on the track and they want to just be perfectionist. And basically, they're already seeing a trainer and they've been working on their like, belly bulge so much. They're 
change their diet. There's nothing that happening. They just have a little bulge up there. Um, otherwise, liposuction, you know, is the best. Nowadays, you know, liposuction is done pretty much most often. We do it patient is awake. But on the average, I think that people are doing, considering these non-invasive stuff, they should not be over 25 on BMI. The way these procedures should be sold is for people that have really kind of got their life under control already, and they just want to kind of fine-tune certain fatty pockets that they cannot get rid of with exercise. I have no idea what my BMI is, but... I'm willing to give this a go. <laughs> Dear listener, I can tell you this is definitely sarcasm. How does that we're trying to figure out how to put those disposable undies on? And that's why I lay them out in the bed. Eventually, we get down to it. So I'm just marking the stomach where we're actually going to do the treatment. Which involves the grabbable bits, right? So, yes, it's I'm just grabbable. grabbing the fat and I'm going to mark it with the applicator length. So that you know where you're putting the little clips. Yep, and I'm going to double check you again when we're on the bed. So, any questions before we begin? How would you describe what it feels like? Like a, a little pull, a little suction. Because you've got the petite applicator, because you've got a small pocket of fat, the suction isn't that deep. It's still going to give you the same result as any of them. Um, and so it's like a little pull and you'll find it a little bit uncomfortable to begin with and when I start the freeze and it starts cooling you'll find it quite cold to begin with. You won't feel the minus 11 degrees Celsius it goes to, you'll just feel a cooling and it'll stay that cold for the whole time. Okay. And I'll give you a call bell as well before, we, um, before I start. So that's if I'm feeling like I can't Oh, if you're uncomfortable or something. Yeah, for any, if you're too hot, you're too cold. Okay. I'm going to turn the heater down in a minute so we don't get any thermal problems with the machine. But okay. I just wanted to be, to be warm when you're in your underwear. Hanging out in getting my underwear. Getting ready. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Every time you ask it, it makes me more nervous. Yeah. Cold, wet, slimy gel pad is coming. Yeah. Okay. And that's why I put you in our disposable undies because it does run and it's very sticky. Can you describe this one? Yeah, well, it's um, cold and sticky. It's like chewing gum. Mm -hmm. um, you could stretch it and it's not going to break. Um, but it is quite cool, so people usually get a shock if I don't tell them. Here we go. Oh, it's not too bad. Not too bad. But okay. because you told me. Yeah. So I'll just get a few of the air bubbles out. Is it like wet seaweed? Yeah, it's, and it is, it is gooey. It's very gooey. Right, so... Go. Here comes the bikini at Christmas. Okay, right. Just going to attach it now, coming in. So that feels like a little grab and cold, but not as cold as I thought it would feel. And I'm just going to put this pillow... Like a breastfeeding pillow to make it sit where it's supposed to be. Basically, so it just keeps it a bit more secure and it doesn't move. Yeah. Okay, I think that's in fine. Cool. It's saying it's ready to cool. I just want to make sure you're happy. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to start it now. Press the button. There we go. There's the sound of the freezing, and you'll start mm -hmm. feeling it cooling. Yeah, I can feel it cooling much now. Straight away. Yep. So that's definitely the most cold I've ever had on that area in my life, but it's not uncomfortable. A little bit of a grab. Now it's getting really cold. That is an unusual feeling. It's like like a little tingle every once in a while, but yeah, like just... a bubble? Yeah, a yeah. bubble. So that'd be like something moving across it, would it? That's, that's the gel in there. That's just normal. Some people bubble, some of them don't. It's, it's different for most people. And just because one side bubbles and one side doesn't, doesn't mean it hasn't worked. Yeah. So it isn't the nicest feeling, but Aisha makes me a cup of tea and pops in to check on me every 10 minutes. Hi, Stacey. Just checking on you. And here's your black tea. How are you feeling? I'm so good. It, yeah. Like it's a bit, if I describe it to someone, it's a bit odd. I'm comfortable, so like someone's grabbing at you. Yeah. But um, actually got easier as it goes on. Yeah, the first five minutes I think are the worst until yeah. you get used to it and then you just have this applicator stuck to you. So you've got another 19 minutes to go. Yeah. It's time to take the applicator off. 
Aisha sprays me with cold water to take the gel off and gets into the massage. Okay, here we go. It's like a butter stick. It's like a butter stick. Doesn't look pretty. So now I'm spraying the. Okay, and now you can start. Oh, that's a weird feeling. Yeah. Hey, that feels weird because I can't really feel my tummy, but I can feel that you're doing it. It's like I've got a cold stone or something on yeah. my stomach. Ew. Like a sausage. <laughs> a really cold sausage. Ew, that's hot. I better not laugh because no, that makes can, things worse. Well, it's up to you. It depends how you're feeling. Um, well, I'm finding it hard not to huh, kind of tense as well. Yeah. Ew, that one there feels horrible. Ooh. <laughs> how are we going? Um, 20 seconds to go or 15? Uh, yeah, yeah, 15. Yeah. And I am quite happy about that. I'll get the ding dong going. And in. Five, four, three, two, one. Right. So, if it's stinging, just hold it. I say yeah. to the patient, just hold it. Yeah. I'll just prepare to do the other side in a minute. Are you ready? No stress. Hmm. That's... Um... I don't feel sick, but that's like, I'm very grateful you've stopped doing that. Is it stinging? A little bit. Yeah, not yeah. burning any nails here. Nah. I feel like it's fatter than it was before. <laughs> what is that about? Is it maybe puffing up a bit? Yes, well, yeah, we'll feel like that, and you'll feel, you could feel swollen for the next ah. two weeks. The other thing is it's because it's numb. Maybe it's always like that, but I don't know because it's... Now I've got half an hour to dread that next massage. Ugh. Right. So you're ready for the second mm -hmm. cycle. Okay. Right. Unfortunately, the machine was playing up. So after a couple of attempts, we gave up doing the second side of my mummy tummy. Instead, I rebooked and came back after the machine had a service. I guess I had a normal sort of reaction to the cool sculpting. I had a strange, sore, but still numb feeling for at least a week after. So if I accidentally bumped my puku, it would be sore. Yet I couldn't feel it properly either. And now, nearly six months later, I think my puku is a bit flatter, considering I've had three children, but I'm a small person anyway. I have to say, I wouldn't have done cool sculpting if it wasn't for this series. I don't really like to think of parts of my body as fat pockets. That's just not my usual self-dialogue. And I'd find it hard to justify that sort of spend just for myself. The best results I've seen is for a woman's under chin, which actually changed her whole side profile. So cool sculpting is not a silver bullet. It's pretty pricey and there can be some side effects. But if you're happy with your weight and just want to remove that little bulge you haven't been able to exercise or diet away, you'd have to give this a 4.5 out of 5. And we'll leave you with these thoughts from Rox Anderson. Remember, the guy who invented cool sculpting. No, I have to tell you honestly, if uh, cool sculpting had been invented first, diet and exercise would be a miracle. This does not really keep you healthy. It's a great treatment for removing local unwanted fat, you know, a bulge or a pooch here and there, right? It doesn't have the benefits of exercise and a healthy diet, and I really have to emphasize that. So this is not a replacement for being healthy. Thanks for listening to this episode of Healthy or Hoax, hosted by me, Stacey Morrison. Our special thanks goes to Aisha Chillick at Prescription Skincare for being as gentle with me as possible. And also to Rox Anderson, Howard Klein, Jonathan Wheeler and Herman Khorasani for their expertise. Healthy or Hoax is available on the RNZ website, rnz.co.nz and wherever you find your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and iHeartRadio. This episode was produced by Liz Garten with help from Kate Pereira-Garcia. The audio engineer was Christoph Karajov and Tim Watkin is the executive producer. Listen out for the next episode on Charcoal. Tēnā rā katoa.